Welcome geeks to another new Code Rules. This time, I'd like to talk about onboarding new software engineers. Why is getting set up and running when you start a new position take so freaking long at some companies? Based on polling I've done, most software engineers change their jobs every two to five years. And some companies are better than others at uh, onboarding software engineers, but most companies, including the bad ones I'm gonna tell you about, need to really spend some time on it. I don't know about you, but starting a new position can be very uh, anxiety producing for many reasons. Part of that is just the unknowns um, at the company, starting a new company, getting to know new people. There's lots of anxieties, but really what I'm focusing on is the anxiety of trying to show some value as soon as possible when you start. When I start a new position, especially contracting, my goal is to show value about within two weeks. After two weeks, I start getting more frustrated and more anxiety because of this. As I stated earlier, some companies are better than others. At a contract that I started, it took five days, over five days, to get my environment set up so I can start coding. And to me, that is just too long. You know, when I first started, they pointed me to a wiki that I worked on for about a day. After working through the wiki for about two days, then I was told that's probably incorrect and to watch a three hour video. What the hell? Yeah. I could only ask questions via Microsoft Teams and that was very slow to get any f answers back and sometimes taking over a day or two. After a couple of days working on this contract, I remembered, worked on a contract at this company a number of years ago, and I remembered I had the same issue back then. It took me a week to get up and running. And then two weeks after that, my machine died. So I had to do the whole process over again. Uh, luckily, it didn't take me a week. I think it took me three or four days. And I actually spent the time to update their P, uh, PDF document that they had at the time with the proper information that was missing out of the PDF documentation. But that was for a different team than the team I'm talking about now. This team seems to be even worse than the team I worked on before. So this company, when they're in trouble, they onboard contractors, sometimes many contractors. So let's just say they onboarded five contractors just this summer. That would be about a cost of $25,000 pretty much wasted of software engineers trying to get their systems up and running. I wonder if companies really take that into account. The other thing is, if it takes five days to get things running and, you know, wikis are incorrect, videos are incorrect, I'm not getting help from anybody at the company, uh, you know, what does that really tell me about the company and that team, you know? After, you know, five days, sometimes I think I, I'm probably wanting to leave after that five days. Maybe I'm already looking for a new contract. So I know sometimes I, if you watch the show, I can get on my high horse sometimes. So I thought back and I go, have I ever made the onboarding process better for, for people in my team? So I actually thought back to the late 2000s when I was in charge of all software development worldwide for a biotech company here in San Diego. When I worked at that company, I was really getting into virtual machines because they were finally getting a little bit more performant to work, you know, especially on external drives. So I made a policy for myself and the team that nobody would be coding or doing any technical work on their actual computer. Everything will de be done via virtual machines. And the main reason I did this back then was because I didn't want the people who worked for me spending a day or more maybe resetting up their machine every time their machine fails, which will happen. So virtual machines was a really great answer for me because they can easily be backed up. And this was before the cloud where they're really easy to be backed up now. So what I did, I created base virtual machines. I had one virtual machine for Visual Studio and everything you need on that machine to get up and running. And then because I did have SQL Server people, I also had a base machine uh, with SQL Server and everything as that they that they needed on that virtual machine. When somebody new came into the team, all I had to do was make a copy of my base machine, rename it. Then I told the engineer to run a program that I put in the root of C 
that would fix all the issues with like SQL Server and stuff like that throughout the machine. And they were literally up and running within 20 minutes. So let's say an hour. So they were up and running in an hour, which if they built that machine from scratch, that would have probably taken upwards towards a day. So already I was saving a lot of time for the company. So this does work. You just have to dedicate time, not only to set these kind of processes up, but also set up time to maintain the processes. You know, the, the, the companies I've worked at that do have their, their setup written down, 100% of the time it's incorrect. So my call to action this week is, you know, have a computer or virtual machine set up with everything the engineer needs the day they start, be actually before the day they start. And these days with the cloud and code spaces, this is really, really easy to do. I have found in the past, larger companies usually have larger setup requirements. So I'm really talking to the larger companies. They really, really need to set up time to make this easy to onboard engineers. What companies really need to do, and I've never worked for a company that did this, but companies really need to crew, to assign a engineering ambassador to the new employee so they can help the engineer. And, and this ambassador, of course, will know how to set up the environments, but they will hold, handhold the, the engineer for the first week or two um, to help them navigate getting everything set up and, and getting productive as fast as possible at the company. As I've said before, you know, uh, being so disorganized and taking so much time, this is a really bad sign to the new engineer. But I really think assigning an engineering ambassador will really help. And while I'm at it, placing so much security on developer machines is really a hamper to productivity and, and even setting up these environments, but even productivity. I have many, many stories I can share, but you know, as we go along in these days, you know, we are getting more and more security placed on us. All organizations are different, but especially the larger organizations, you know, I can easily see 20 to 30% of the day just dealing with uh, these kind of roadblocks and security roadblocks at the company. And whenever I think about this, you know, if, if they want to place this kind of security on administrative people, HR people, stuff like that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, maybe because I'm not those people, you know, software engineers really need this lesson on them. And, you know, it always comes back to me to trust. You know, if you don't trust your people that work for your company, especially your software engineers, then why do you have them? It would be better just to get rid of them and just hire trustful people. So companies, can we please find a happy medium for software engineers and DevOps security to, to make this better for everybody? Well, that's it for this new code rules. You know, what are your thoughts? Have you worked at companies like this? Have you worked at companies that are really bad? Have you worked at companies that were really good? I would love to hear from you, especially the, those two extremes. Uh, so please send an email uh, to rockinthecodeworld at csharpcorner.com. And you can also see all of my code rules uh, by going to that link there. So I'll see you next time on New Code Rules.